we have there, although it's only two spots or so of him, is Mvula. Yes, that's what I said. It is Mvula. And apparently he's got an impala kill somewhere around here. Now, there are thousands of things to talk, say about the sighting, but the first is, of course, that he is in some grass. And you can see we've probably driven past 500 leopards over the last few days and not seen him. Isn't that wonderful? I'm hoping he's going to lift his head at some stage so that we can have a small view of him, which would be very special indeed. And I must just apologise for my utter incompetence on the radio this morning. Uh, he was apparently found, well, only about half an hour ago, but I just didn't hear about it. So it took Herbert to, I think, pick it up on the radio and then find out why on earth I wasn't hurrying this way. And I also know that some of you were asking about the lions on Arethusa. Uh, the reason I didn't rush off there in the morning is that because of elephant plains and Arethusa and Simbambili, all of them wanting to get into that sighting, it really would have been an absolute bun fight. And so much better to do it slightly later in the morning or early in the afternoon. And there is Mvula's face. Are you okay? I have not seen this leopard for, I think it must be almost a year. And I'm sure you're all just as excited as I am to see him. <laughs> he, is <laughs> he is rather hidden in the bushes there, and in fact, I don't know that the last time I saw I'm trying to remember when I last saw him, and I don't know if it wasn't the day that Scott and I spent all afternoon with him, or all afternoon, yeah, all morning and afternoon with him, and then as we were going live for the TV show, he disappeared, and that must have been, when was that, that was in October, no, it was Big Cat Week 2015, no, not Big Cat Week. It was, couldn't have been Big Cat Week. Did they have a... It was in October. It was just before Christmas time in 2016. 2015. All right, shall we try and move a bit? I thought Big Cat Week was in February. I don't think it was in February, though. Now, Roxy, he has a name. Um, which was clearly not given to him by a local person. Uh, it was probably agreed to by a local person. His name, Mvula, I isn't actually a word. Imvula, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> yeah, in the word in the Zulu language, Imvula is is rain, and apparently he was born during a big rainstorm somewhere. The local language here, Shangan, the rain is the rain is Mfula, which is a similar word but it's not quite the same. So his word is, his name is the Zulu word for rain. Now, he was one of the very first leopards that I saw here, if not the first, no, he wasn't the first, Shadow was the first one. Uh, he came very soon after that, though. And he's a, he's a, he's an interesting one because he's not a big leopard. And he's made his way in the world without size. And I think that's quite impressive in the animal kingdom, especially. And while he is almost non-territorial now, he does seem to have found himself a small niche. He was chased from most of his sort of traditional range by Tingana and latterly his son Quarantine and I suppose what might be described his stepson uh, Shivambalana off to the east. And then in the north, He's just kind of semi-occupied a territory with Gijima, who's a much shyer male, uh, and that's whose territory he would seemingly be in right now. But he still managed to mate, he still manages to eat, he's apparently in pretty good nick. So I think it's wonderful that we've got him here. Even though he's not doing anything. I don't know where his impala kill is. But with any luck, it will be revealed at some stage. 
I'd love to know when the rest of you saw Mvula. Does anybody remember when the last time they saw Mvula was? Vim, do you remember? Not that long ago. Not that long ago. No. When did you see him? Uh, I was in the SFMC group. Um, but I don't remember exactly. Uh, now, I know he has been seen, but when was the last time you actually saw him? Yeah. yeah. A long time. Two, three months ago. Now, Pug Fanatic, this is, of course, a subject that could be debated for years. I suspect the chat room will go in, it'll start exploding with um, various commentary on the naming of animals and who gets to name them and how they get to name them and who should be able to and who shouldn't be able to. Well, in theory, with the leopards, what happens is the very first person to find the leopard cub has the honor of naming the leopard when it reaches a year old. Now, in the case of Shongile and Horsana, that didn't happen, A, because they become characters to us from the day they're born, and so we wanted them to have names long before they were a year old. And so what we did was to defer, Brent found the cubs, and we deferred that honor to the senior rangers of Juma, Taxon and Rexon, uh, not Rexon, Taxon and uh, Aubrey at the time, and they came up with the names from Gile and Hosanna. And then for Mvula, I don't know who named him, <clears throat> but I suspect that the ranger who found him probably decided this was quite a good name, asked his tracker, and the tracker sort of said, yes, okay, that's fine. Because the tracker would almost certainly have been not a Zulu, but a Shangan. So that's why I'm 90% sure that this leopard was named by one of the young white guides as opposed to one of the Shangan guides here. Uh, with the lions, um, the lions, we came up with names and checked them and checked the spelling and that sort of thing. And it was agreed to, in a rangers meeting, that we could name the male lions because, again, they're characters for us and so they need to have names. And so those four names of our four male lions were very important um, from that point of view. But normally the male lions are not named. So we've named them for safari life basically that's why they're named in this area uh, the coalition that they belong to is always named and the birmingham boy coalition uh, was born on a farm called birmingham which is about say 100 kilometers off in that direction over there so that's where the birmingham boys get their name from the inkuhuma pride is a very old pride and they named after a tree the brown ivory tree the inkuhuma tree i don't know if they particularly liked lying underneath one particular tree, but that's probably why they got their name. The Styx Pride got their name from uh, the Styx River, of course, which was the river that you crossed to the land of the dead, and I suspect that they were named by, if not the owners of Marla Marla, probably one of the guides or senior rangers at Marla Marla, because obviously Styx is not a Shangan name either. So with the leopards, they tend to get Shangan names, with a lot of the other animals, not always. They tend to be named, the lions tend to be named off the farms on which they spend most of their time. And the individuals in the lion prior seldom actually have names unless they're very characteristic. For example, Amber Eyes, who I haven't seen for a while, but she's part of, uh, she's the most characteristic and possibly um, charismatic uh, lion in the Inkuhuma Pride, and she's got obviously Amber Eyes, and so she's got a name. But otherwise they don't tend to, the lions, it's normally the leopards that have names. <coughs> But the amount of um, emotion, the amount of um, sort of pain, the amount of uh, talking, the amount of shouting and emails and carrier pigeons and satellite communications and um, all sorts of meetings that go on when a name starts to be picked, well, you just beg as belief. And uh, Karen, you say that Mvula was named by Ryan, who used to work at Arethusa. I'm assuming it's not the Ryan who lives there now, um, because I suspect that the Ryan, yeah, uh, apparently he was known as the Leadwood ma male at Lion Sands, and he's now Mvula. <coughs> 